All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 103. We are taking a step back from fractions and decimals, getting back into geometry, and welcome to volume. And what volume is, is the amount of space in an object. And it's measured either in cubic units, or you could say units cubed, with a little three for an exponent. And let's take a look at this Rubik's Cube right here because we had one like this last week. Just wanted to know how many cubes are there. Well, if we just took a look at this front face, we can see that there's nine, right? But then we also have two more rows of nine. So you have nine in the first row and nine more in that second row and nine more in that third row, you would have 27 total cubes, right? So that's going to go and set us up to see the real formula in order to calculate the volume of a cube or rectangular solid. Use the formula of length times width times height. Length times width times the height. And so you also have to remember now three different types of measurement. Regular unit segments, whether it's just plain inches or feet or meters or miles, they all measure distance. There you're talking just a straight line. Square units measure area, whether you say square inches or inches squared or square feet, or feet squared, or square meters, or meters squared, etc. You're talking about the area of an object. And this new one, cubic units measure volume, or cubic feet, or feet cubed, cubic meters, or meters cubed. You're talking about how much total space is in this 3D object. So let's go and jump ahead right now. So we're going to start off pretty easy. Find the volume, length, times width, times height. So I'm going to start off my length times my width, 12 times 5. Hey, that's 60, right? And then I'm going to take that 60 and multiply it by the height. The height appears to be 4, so I have 60 times 4. Let's just use the cover up the zero trick. What's 6 times 4? Hopefully everybody should know. 6 times 4 is 24. And I have one zero in my problem, so I better have one zero in my answer. I measured it in meters, and I'm doing a volume problem, so I need cubic meters, or meters cubed because I'm talking about three dimensions, the length, the width, and the height. So getting a little bit tricky here because they gave you a lot more numbers on this one, right? You got to go and take a look and think. My length is four and my width is one and five tenths. So I'm going to start off there. 1 and 5 tenths has two digits, so I better put him up on top, times 4, right? And let's start multiplying. 1 and 5 tenths times 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Going to carry up my 2. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 more is 6. But I have one number behind the decimal point in the problem. So I need one number behind the decimal point in the answer. And I end up with just regular six feet, right? Let's go and simplify that out because I don't need six and zero tenths. Now let's go and multiply it by the height. The height appears to be two. So I'm going to go and take my six, multiply it by two more, and I just end up with 12. The tricky part here is making sure you're using the right numbers, right? And it's a volume problem, and I measured it in feet. I took three different dimensions, the length, the width, and the height. So I have to label that as 
cubic feet or feet cubed. Check out this one. There's no numbers at all. Find the volume if each cube measures one cubic inch. Well, how are we going to do this if there's no numbers? Well, we can count, right? We know that here's one inch, two inch, three inch, four, five, six inches for the length. Let's go and measure the width. One, two, three, four inches for the width. And we have two inches over here for the height, right? So once I have all my dimensions counted here, it's just length times width times height, right? So let's start off. Length times width, six times four, hey, that's 24. Let's go and multiply that by the height, 24 times two, and that's going to give us a total of 48, right? And it was measured in cubic inches, so let's go ahead and relabel inches because I use three dimensions, the length, the width, and the height. So I'm going to put a little exponent of three for inches cubed or cubic inches for the area. Here's one a little bit different. Check this out. Nick wanted to find the total area of the outside of a cereal box. He cut open the box and laid it flat, and noticed that the creases in the box divided it into six rectangles. What is the total area of the surface of the box? This is not a volume problem. This is a surface area problem. But we got to go and start taking a look right now about all the different areas that you have. You got to think of this as six different rectangles. So six different rectangles, you need to think about six different lengths and widths. Let's start up here on the top right now. We have a length of five inches here and a width of one inch right there. So let's think about what that area would be. That one's pretty easy, right? This would be five square inches. Not too tough on that one. Let's break it down a little bit. Let's take a look at this side tab here. We have a length of one inch right along there. And we have a width of seven inches along there. Seven times one. That one's not too tough. So we have seven square inches right there. Gets a little bit trickier if we move into the one in the middle. Let's take a look here. What do we have? Well, I still have one inch here for the width. But I don't have any numbers listed out right here, right? But you got to think, it is parallel and congruent to some other line segments here. If we're trying to figure out what the length here is, it is exactly parallel and congruent to this label line, right? If this line segment here is seven inches, this line segment here has to be seven inches. So seven times one again, we're going to again have a total area in this rectangle of seven inches. And let's do the last one down at the bottom before we move on to the big ones. We have five inches along here for a length. And we have a width of one inch again. So our total area of that tab is going to be five inches. So let's take care of the two in the middle. And I don't have any lines along him. Again, we're going to have to look for parallel and congruent line segments. If we're trying to figure out the length of this segment right here, I know that he is parallel and congruent to this seven inches right here, right? So even though he's not labeled, if you look for sides that are parallel and congruent, we should be able to know that this side right here is seven. 
Again, there's no label for this line segment, but he is also parallel and congruent to this side right here, which is five inches. So I know this side is seven inches. I know this side is five inches. So put the two together and we are talking about 35 square inches right here, right? Let's go ahead and try it again. On our last one, we actually should know this rectangle and this rectangle actually are congruent as well. If you don't believe me, here is five inches again. Here is another seven inches again because they are parallel and congruent, right? So seven times five does go ahead and make 35 square inches. So now that we have all six rectangles for the area figured out, the final step then would be to add all six areas for the total surface area of the box, right? So let's list down these six numbers. So we have 35 plus 35 plus 7 plus 7 plus 5 plus 5 square inches. So now that we have all six areas listed out here, let's go and add them all up. We have 5 plus 5 is 10, plus another 7 is 17, plus this other 7 is 24, plus another 5 is 29, plus that final 5 is 34. So I'm going to write down my 4, carry my 3. 3 plus 3 plus 3, that's going to give us... 9 for a total area of 94 square inches for the surface area of that box. So check out this one. It says, Mr. Hines' cereal box had the dimensions listed below, and they're asking us, what is a reasonable estimate of the box's volume? This is a volume problem, but we have to estimate it, right? We learned the other day that when you're estimating, it's all about the fraction, whether it's more than a half or less than a half, right? So we have a length right now of 10 and 1 8 inches. We have a width of 3 and 3 4 inches, and we have a height of 13 and 3 8 inches. So let's go and jump on right here, 1 8 one eighth is definitely less than a half because half of eight is four and one is less than four, right? So I'm going to call this length 10. Moving on over here, taking a look at three fourths. Is it more than a half or less than a half? Well, half of four is two. Three is more than two, so this is more than a half. So I'm going to estimate him to be 4 inches for the width, right? And let's try it one last time. 13 and 3 eighths inches, half of 8 is 4. Compare that to the numerator. Well, 3 is less than 4, so this is less than a half. So I'll estimate this to be 13 inches. So... Length times width times height. Using the estimated numbers, I'm going to go and multiply these two together first. would be easiest. 13 times 10 would be 130, right? Because it really doesn't matter what order you multiply them in because of the commutative property of multiplication, right? So 13 times 10 gives us 130. I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by the 4. So 130 times 4. I go 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 3 is 12. I write down my 2. I carry my 1. And 4 times 1 is 4 plus the 1 that I carried would be 520 estimated cubic inches. I multiplied three numbers together the length, the width, and the height. So when I label it, I have to label it in cubic inches. And that, my friends, is the end. You are definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper and a pencil for the Socrative quiz. 
and good luck. Oh,